Hey everyone, welcome back to Yo-Yo Knows Tech. My name is Bill. Today we're going to look at some affordable, simple ways to automate the lighting in your house. So guys, I'm pretty excited. Uh, didn't expect these videos to go very far, but we've already surpassed 75,000 views and 2,000 subscribers. So that's fantastic. I mean, that's pretty exciting news. Thank you so much. I uh, figured that this would be more of a learning experience. I wanted to learn more about video and video editing and stuff like that. And at the same time, I hope to share with you uh, some of the things that I do with technology and home automation and gadgets and devices and things like that. And uh, hey, I'm thrilled it's taking off. Hopefully you're still enjoying it. If you haven't already, subscribe. If you know someone who would be interested in this type of thing, send them a link, use the sharing buttons below, and uh, hey, let's help the community keep growing. I'd like to thank my friends over at Banggood for sending me some more products this week to help make this video. Uh, they provided me with some LED light strips, light bulbs, and some motion detectors to help us set up some of the things I want to show you today. Uh, I'm going to provide their link below, so definitely head on over to their website, check it out. They have their 11th anniversary sale going on right now, so lots of really interesting products to look at. Also, all of the other links to the products I talk about today are down below, so if you found one of these to be helpful and something you'd like to set up on your own, definitely take a look at one of those links and uh, get started on your project today. Today we're going to look at home automation. Lighting specifically. Lighting is one of the best ways that you can get started because it's super simple. We all need lighting. We all have lighting. So it's just a great place to start. It's also something that comes as a welcome ad. Most people aren't going to complain when they open the door when they get home if the lights turn on. That's just a simple thing that you can do. Helps make everyone's life easier and safer. And So some of the ways that I automate lighting, there's a few different areas where I look at and there's a few different days, ways that I do it. One of the ways that I like to automate is using timers. And this one's pretty simple. Uh, set a timer, light comes on, set a timer, light goes off. The nice thing about home automation is you can add to that. You can actually use some markers such as sunset and sunrise and you can offset your times on that. So you could say, for example, I want my lights to come on maybe 10, 15 minutes after sunset. So let it get a little bit dark, turn them on. You really want to play with it, you could do things like change the level. So, you know, 10 minutes after sunset, bring them on to 20%. And maybe an hour after sunset, have them ramped all the way up to 100%. So there's some interesting things you can do there to add a little bit of uh, theatrical elements to your home automation. The other thing you can do with that is obviously turn your lights all off at night. So personally, I have a couple rules where I turn lights off at different times. And I actually have one master rule I run at night just to make sure everything got turned off. Usually two, three in the morning. Uh, I have one last rule, I call it last call. And it just turns off all the lights in the house it shouldn't be on. So if anyone's left anything on, we make sure it's turned off. Got to save that electricity, keep the bill down. Now, there's three ways I said you can do this. The first one is timers. The second one, and this is kind of my favorite because I think it's the most dynamic, is motion detection. Uh, lots of different devices for this that are out there. Is the ones that Banggood sent me. Uh, Aeon makes some. I use the one built into Plum, although not officially supported by Plum yet. Plum, go ahead and make that part of your officially supported light dimmer. I think it will make your product 10 times better. Uh, and it's already a great product. With motion detection, this allows you to set it all up and basically your lights stay off unless it detects some motion and then they turn on and then what you can do is put rules behind that. I'm going to show you how in OpenHab, but obviously it's the same with smart things and other, other home automation uh, hubs. Uh, you make them turn off after a period of time, they, they don't need to be on anymore. Again, let's save that electricity. So that's the second way I do it. The third way is pretty simple. It's using a contact sensor, a read sensor, or open close sensor. Um, these are the things that are built into your doors. I actually tap into my alarm system and I show you how to do that in another video if you want to take a look up here somewhere. Um, really easy to do, but what that does is when you come home at night, you open the door and the second that door breaks open, lights turn on. Like I said, it's usually one of the most welcome additions because you know, you're coming home with bags in your hand and groceries and maybe your kids and, and you open the door and you hear the alarm going and the lights all turn on and just makes life simple. So that's a super easy way to do it. And the nice thing is most often these are inexpensive and simple ways to get started with home automation. So what I'm going to do is show you a couple little projects. 
um, and some of the way I set it up behind it, but uh, LED strips. I use those around TVs and around the room to provide moon lighting when people come in using motion sensors. I also put them around the bottom of beds sometimes to provide like a night light or a mood lighting in a room. Someone gets up in the middle of the night, they trip the motion sensor, turns on the lights so they can see where they're going, but doesn't wake anyone else up in the room or doesn't make your eyes go crazy because the lights all just turned on. Super easy way to do that. I use my sensors to turn on my lights at night, like I said, with sunset, and I turn them off at specific times. And I have some preset timers for my uh, garden or landscape lighting. So let's jump into the code, let's take a look, and guys, you're gonna have your house and your lighting automated in no time. Let's do this. Okay, so we're gonna just jump over into the basic open hab interface, and one of the default URI or U one of the default UIs that comes with it is the hab admin. So we're going to go ahead and go in here. Now, normally, if I'm going to do my configuration files, I will use uh, a text editor, a code editor, uh, something like brackets on the Mac. But today, what we're going to do for to make it easy, I'm going to show you uh, the built-in editor that they have in Habmin. So under rules, uh, first thing you're going to see is all my current rules. These are the ones that I use, and I tend to put them in different files. So DSC would be all my alarm rules, motion back porch, motion basement. And depending on how complicated they're going to be or how much I want to keep uh, an eye on them, I will put them into different files. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump over to the source, and I am going to say new. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to build a basic rule. I've already gone in and added the Banggood um, Z-Wave motion sensor to OpenHab, and I have added a uh, on-off uh, Z-Wave switch, and I've plugged it into the light strips that they sent to me. So let me just copy-paste. I'm going to provide all of the um, information that you need in the link below for my website, so you can copy paste this code if you want as well. But what I've done, in, what I've put in here to start with, is the basic anatomy of an open hab rule. So essentially, what we have is the rule name, which is Banggood Motion Sensor. Now, no matter how many files you have, you should always make sure this is unique, and it's something that'll show up in the logs. So if you want to watch for this and see when it's running or try to troubleshoot problems in the in the future, this is a really good place to keep track of it. The next part is you have when, uh, then, and then end. That's the basic anatomy that you're going to see in every single rule you put in OpenHab. So with this particular rule, what we're saying is when the item, and I always call my motion sensors motion underscore just to keep them together, but I named this one motion underscore banggood motion sensor. Um, so I'm saying when item motion banggood motion sensor changed, so whenever it detects motion, then, now this is, one way of doing what doing uh, tracking and motion sensing within here. Uh, some people will do it different ways. This is my preferred method. Um, what I have done is I've gone ahead and created a variable in uh, OpenHab. I call them motion stamps. Um, and I called this one motion stamp bang good motion sensor. So I would create one of these little variables for every single motion sensor I have. And what I do is I track the last time there was actual motion. So the rest of this is basically saying post update motion stamp banggood motion sensor and then i say new date time and all that basically does is it puts the date time into there so we're saying post the update to the variable motion stamp banggood motion sensor with the information date time so that's pretty much the anatomy of a rule and what that's doing here if all you wanted to do was track the motion sensor you could go ahead and do that you can see here i keep all of my uh, motion sensors and i timestamp them all of the time so I'm going to go ahead and copy in the next part of this rule. Okay, I've already set up a Z-Wave appliance module, and I named that Banggood LED strip, LED strip. And essentially what that is, is I've plugged that LED strip from Banggood into that. And I'm going to copy this in here, and let's just format it a little better so we can see it. Sorry, let's go back to the beginning. So what we've said here is that if the item motion Banggood sensor changed, we're going to go ahead and we're going to update the variable that we had with a time and date that that last changed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look to see if the uh, appliance module I have into the LED strip is off. So we say if the Banggood LED strip is off, then what we want to do is we want to send a command to that saying Banggood LED strip turn on. And that's pretty much how simple it is. So uh, double um, slashes like this instigate a comment. So I'll often put that in my code, but I just say Z-Wave Banggood LED strip so that I know what I'm dealing with. And that is the uh, complete part of the rule to turn things on.
The next part of this rule, let's just jump down and I'm going to copy in the basic part of the rule. So we'd have the whole structure again, just like before. So the name of this rule, and this could go in a separate file or in the same one. We could say the name of this rule is Banggood LED Strip Off. So again, we want a unique title. And then I'm going to say here, when item sun elevation change. Now, this is a little trick that I do. Uh, sun elevation is something that's in open Hab and it's essentially part of the um, part of the astro binding. Uh, so you're going to want to make sure that that is turned on. And essentially what this does is it provides you with um, the sun elevation, which is something that changes every single minute. So you can actually use this as a trigger and it's something that will happen consistently. So I always use if item sun elevation changed, which does change every single minute, that's guaranteed. Then, uh, and this is where the, the interesting, so I say if now minutes after 10. So what I'm doing there is I'm saying if the current time minus 10 minutes is after the motion sensor variable time. So this one up here that we ran and we, we saved the last time the motion went off, that's in this variable here, motion stamp banggood motion sensor dot state. So I say if the current time minus 10 minutes is after the time stored in the minutes, so basically the time the motion last happened plus 10 minutes, then do something. So I haven't done anything yet. I'm going to add that in now. So let's get the code to do that. And you probably guessed it. It's going to be fairly simple. We are going to, whoops, we're going to go ahead and turn that lead strip off. So we are going to first check the condition. We're going to say if the Banggood LED strip state is on, because there's no point in turning it off if it's already off. If it is on, send a command Banggood LED strip off. So if we want to go ahead and see that in action, we do some motion and the lights are going to turn on. And then I time lapse this a bit, but you give it about 10 minutes and of course the lights turn off. Now, that's pretty much it. So what we're looking at here is a complete rule and you can use this for any different types of lights you have in OpenHab, uh, whether it be uh, LIFX, whether it be these motion strips, whether it be um, plum light switches, Z-Wave light switches, anything. These two basic segments make up a lot of the rules you're gonna to wanna to use for lighting in OpenHab. So guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't done it already, down below is the subscribe link uh, hopefully you're enjoying my videos and if you haven't hit that already, go ahead and hit the subscribe link. Um, also, if you know of somebody who may be interested in this channel, someone you think that home automation is right up their alley, send off a link to them. Let them know about it. Uh, help spread the word. Thank you and we'll see you in the next video.